let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give me a holy honk. Or a greet one another. Yes. Woohoo! Woohoo! So this is our way of giving one another a greeting of peace. We're all here together, worshiping and praising God. We're glad that you're here. We're hoping in just a few more weeks to go inside. So that's going to be, you know, for some of you that might be difficult, and we understand we are um, looking uh, very carefully at it. We've been working at getting the, the uh, stuff that we need, you know, the cleansers and all of that. So uh, we'll let you know, we'll keep you informed because it is a very difficult decision because I know some of you would prefer to stay outside. You may have to go online. We don't know. Maybe we'll do uh, two services, one in and one out. We just don't know. Okay, so we're, we're working on it. But for now, we're just enjoying being out, uh, outside in God's creation and uh, to worship and praise him. So let's get together and Doris. Mm -hmm. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves because you have become very dear to us. centuries it has spread and grown strong we thank you that we are people that live in your kingdom knowing you as Lord and Savior let us be leaven as we live helping to draw others to you that your kingdom abounds in wonderful and gracious ways in your name we pray amen, amen.
reading from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning with verse 4. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, and many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. A man named Simon had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone, from the least to the greatest, often spoke of him as the Great One, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astonished them with his magic. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. This ends the reading. God's people, the flock of the Lord. We are God's people, the flock of the Lord. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all you lands, all you lands. Serve the Lord now with gladness, come before God, singing for joy. We are God's people. According to St. Matthew, chapter 13. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree, and birds come and make nests in its branches. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Here ends the reading. What do we believe? Down and 
Father, we believe, we believe in you, the one true God. And so we come to you this day, and in our belief and in our trust, we still waver, but that's because we're human, but you always pick us up. And so, Lord, as we believe, we live in your kingdom now, the kingdom will, which will come in all its fullness when we come home to be with you. And so, Lord, as we live and breathe, as we love and care, Bless us, bless our energies, and to you be the glory this day. In your name we pray, amen. This is the time when I say you may be seated. <laughs> All right, so I, our new series is about um, earthly stories with heavenly meanings. We're talking about parables, some of the parables of Jesus. And, and so we're going to take a look at a few of them we looked at last week. And this week, uh, remind you that parables are earthly stories with heavenly meanings, 
using, com using common items, common activities, common details, like salt and seeds and weeds and trees and bushes and, and farming uh, and sheep as common uh, sites and experiences to explain spiritual truths. And so isn't it amazing and I was writing this earlier, so isn't this amazing that 2,000 plus years later, we can still understand the spiritual truths of Jesus' parables. I think that's amazing. God's word and his ways are just so amazing. So I'm going to dig into the two parables uh, of, uh, that talk about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, which are two phrases that are used uh, to express the presence of God in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in the world, which is made known. God's kingdom is made known through believers, through followers, through you and me. That's the key. God in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit works in us to make known his kingdom right now the fullness of which we will know when we come home to be with him or when he comes again. Jesus proclaimed that his coming into the world meant that the kingdom of God was at hand. That's what scripture says. And so he was inaugurating the kingdom of God in the very midst of those who were his hearers, his, his listeners, those he spoke to. So teaching and telling these two parables that I want to share about with you, the mustard seed and the leaven or the yeast, um, Jesus brings forth, he, he presents the understanding of the nature of the kingdom of God. Some way for the audience to begin to conceive of his presence in the world and what it meant for Jesus to come as the Son of God into the world, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus likened the kingdom of God to a seed, a small seed, the mustard seed, whose small form, that tiny little seed you see on the front cover of the bulletin, grows into a mustard tree, a tree, an impressive tree. Ten, as big as 10 feet over time, where all kinds of birds could sit in the tree and rest and nest. The point of this parable, now you think this is going to be a short sermon, but it's not. So I'll tell you the point of the parable and then we're going to move on to other things. The point of this parable places emphasis in the power of the seed. From this tiny, tiny seed, a big plant, a huge plant, a huge tree ultimately grows. Something huge can grow from this little. The sower of the seed is Jesus. The seed is the word of God. And the presence of God in Jesus Christ grows through the word. So Jesus Christ is present in the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Remember that. So the word Jesus is in the seed as well as sowing the seed because he is God himself. And so through the holy word from great things will grow. And his word is comfort and hope, a place to rest, a place to live or nest in for all people. From the little of Jesus Christ, Jesus in the arms of his mother Mary, watched by sleepy Joseph in that first birth, comes all that we have and know to be today, the great tree of life. Now, well, let's talk about the leaven for a minute, or the yeast. You know, the parable, uh, it's interesting that the yeast parable follows the uh, mustard seed parable. It's very interesting. If you've ever baked, anybody bake a loaf of bread out here? 
I have, and sometimes it rises and sometimes it doesn't, right? And it becomes a rock. Well, anyway, if, it, if you've ever baked a loaf of bread, you may understand uh, the radical difference that occurs. And if you've never seen it, you may not understand the radical difference that leaven or yeast makes. So think about, you know, those Fleischmann packets of, of yeast or the little jar of, of yeast. It's just a little, it's live, it's live cells. And you take, anyway, you take the, what is it, the, the flour, the oil, a little bit of water, a little bit of salt, you mush that all together, then you throw in some yeast and uh, you knead it and, it and it becomes a doughy lump, right? You know, it's like a doughy lump or a, a compact blob. And then all of a sudden, you let it sit for a little while, warm up for a little while, what happens? Things begin to happen. And there's a, a, um, an I Love Lucy episode where she makes, and it, and, right? And it just keeps going and going into her kitchen and it's just into the living room and all over the place because she's got too much yeast in it. But so from that little bit comes, things happen. Things expand, the dough rises or expands. So if you put it into a small bowl, watch out, which is what I did one time, uh, learning how to bake, and it just was all over the counter. But anyway, like the parable of the mustard seed, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven begins in a small way. However, unlike the mustard seed, unlike the mustard seed, yeast and leaven does not grow. It just doesn't grow unless you add the ingredients and then the yeast itself isn't growing. The yeast is transformed. The yeast transforms and changes the ingredients of the flour, salt, and oil, and water, and, and all that into the dough. The yeast is the active ingredient that transforms because what happens is yeast is a single living cell organism and which when warmth and moisture is added to it, it um, there's a fermentation process that happens and the bubbles, you know, in your bread, you have little bubbles, little holes in your bread. Well, that's because the carbon dioxide is created and that's what makes the, the breads and the baked goods so delicious. So it's a fermentation activity. The point of the parable, you know, after all the science, the uh, explanation, the places the emphasis on the transformation. What happens? What is transformed? And so from this little yeast, can't do it on its own, but together with other ingredients, forms, creates and transforms, metamorphosizes or radically changes into something. God's word. God's word from the mustard seed is transformed into and planted into our hearts. And so we are transformed. We are changed. People's lives can be changed. Our hearts can be enlarged. Lives can grow into love and compassion and grace and mercy and forgiveness and generosity of spirit and kindness. So I want you to think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine our homes and our families where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine politics and politicians where love is the way. Imagine commerce, businesses, industry, where love is the way. Imagine this broken and bruised and battered world where love is the way. You see, when love is the way, no one has to go hungry. 
in this world ever again. And when love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, bigotry, prejudice, animosity disappears. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an everlasting flowing brook, says scripture. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and our shields. When love is the way, there's a place for all of God's creation, all of God's people. When love is the way, we know that God is victorious and that there is a new heaven and a new earth, a new world, a new way to live. This is the plan and purposes of God in sending Jesus Christ into the world and Jesus Christ ascending into heaven and leaving the Holy Spirit, the word of God, the word of God. Jesus came to this world to renew it completely and eternally by love and to restore the kingdom of God and to usher in the new heaven and the new earth so that all peoples of the world will be blessed. Right now, it may not feel like the forces of evil in this world are being destroyed. It seems like the forces of evil are winning. But in these two parables, we are assured that God's kingdom will not fail from the little of the word of the presence and power of Jesus Christ in the world. From that little beginning comes the kingdom and it will not fail, but will significantly, universally and globally prosper and grow. Love wins if you and me, we live out loud for our Savior. If we express our heart, our love, which is being transformed, ever expanding by the yeast of God's word. Life and this world will be so different. And the world needs us to speak. We cannot stutter any longer. We need to speak and let and help and expand the kingdom of God. And lives will be changed from the cosmic mustard seed and from the cosmic yeast. The kingdom of heaven of God grows and the world will radically be changed. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we imagine this world to be a world of love and care and compassion, but it's hard for, for us. We feel, you know, especially with this COVID thing that we're so far away from one another. We're so not in our, um, relationship with one another that feeds us and, and, and helps us to grow and be generous of heart and spirit. But as we live out loud for you, Lord, by your word, by serving you, by making you and proclaiming you as God and Lord, we help the leaven of your kingdom to grow to expand. And so, Lord, we thank you. From that little comes so much. Even in your meal of body and blood, your last supper, that little bit, that little wafer, and that little sip of wine, your body and blood is life for us. From that little comes all that we need to be nourished and sustained in your kingdom here right now. And so, Lord, we thank you. For the body of believers, we thank you for this meal, and we thank you that we can, and you have called us, and you have empowered us to live for you, so that your kingdom will come.
and your will shall be done. And all the people together said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we rejoice that we are gathered to worship you. Our parking lot is a holy place, Lord. Wherever people are worshiping you, those places have become holy places as well. We thank you for this time of celebrating your love. Jesus, because of your death and resurrection, you have given us your kingdom to live within. It is not something we can see. It is a spiritual gift which binds us together because we are your children. This gift is precious to us. Help us to strive to draw others into your kingdom. Let the leaven of your Holy Spirit continue to transform us into your likeness so that others will want to know you. Let your kingdom grow, Lord. The world needs it. The world needs you. Heavenly Father, there is nothing we can do through our techn technological skills that can equal the gathered church and body, voice, and presence. In this season of the COVID virus, we have missed our coming together face to face to be the church. We cry out to you to hear our prayer for, all, for an end to this trial so that we may come back in full voice to worship you. Gracious Savior, we pray for all those who are struggling with any kind of illness. Especially we pray for John and Carol, Alex, Kareen, David Hurt, Doris, Jade, Herb Schoen, Doreen, Eleanor, Stacy, Debbie Quillis, Leo, Bob Roby, and those and their loved ones. We thank you for your continued healing of Nancy Laub, Sue Walters, Nancy Applegate, Antoinette Budd. We ask for healing for Debbie Quillis and Carol, Peggy and Bill. For those celebrating life here through the gift of another birthday, Eli, our Eli Casraquilo, Bill Stark, Connor Moscow, Dorothy Rogers, and those celebrating wedding anniversaries, especially Bob and Denise Lewis. We pray for many more years in which these servants live as blessings to you. And we pray for the family of Kenny Bradley as they celebrate the 18th year of Kenny's life with you, Lord, in heaven. We pray for those families that are struggling, that they may see a way through their difficulties. And we pray for those who have challenges which weigh them down. Help them to seek your wisdom and guidance. We especially pray for Jerry, Tom, Terry, Braden, Dorothy, Kevin. Healer of every ill, there are so many living lives battered and bruised, lonely and lost by life's circumstances. Help them to know you care about what burdens them. Bring comfort to their hearts. Give them strength to meet whatever the day brings. Lord, we are living in uncertain times. Main streets are burning. Our communities are divided. Help us to find a way through those things which separate us. Let us find ways to hear one another. Kindle in us a desire to resolve the racial tensions around us. For those who are stoking division, we pray for reason and love to once again prevail. We pray for safety for our law enforcement. Lord, you are the great protector. Keep safe all those who are returning to the workplace especially Don Applegate. Place your mighty hand of protection upon them. May we all seek your wisdom and guidance 
your patience, and your comfort as we continue to deal with the pandemic. Heavenly Father, we pray for our schools and those who work within them. Let schools be positive places where our children can learn and thrive. Be with parents and caregivers as they teach at home. Let them be good examples of persistence, peacefulness, and love. Almighty God, draw our hearts to you and guide our minds. Fill our imaginations. Let us follow your will so that we might be wholly yours. Use us as your servants so that we might seek the welfare of your people. Precious Savior, bless us with a sense of awe and wonder in who you are. We offer our praise and thanks to you for you alone are worthy. In your name we pray, amen. amen. that you gave your son into the world. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. You, God, dwelt among us, sharing messages of love for you, a new way to love you, a new way to love others and to honor you. And you gave this meal before your son went to the cross. He ate with his disciples and he shared a very precious meal that has been handed down to us. And so in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You're welcome, whoever said that. You are welcome to eat and drink at this table.
up the world. One breath that gives life, one sovereign in power, who speaks with thunder and fire. One more, one king, there is no other.
We thank you for this precious meal, knowing that it means life for us. May it strengthen us in our journey of faith and our love for you and one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may you know that the Lord goes before you paving the way, that the Lord goes behind you to urge you along, alongside you to be your best friend, and above you to watch out over you. Go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great to see all of you here. Wonderful, wonderful worship when we're all together in the name of Christ.